Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Pros and Politics Podcast, where we are polished and poised for greatness and impact. Thank you so much for joining us today on the season finale of season one of Pearls and Politics Podcast. We are so excited. We are so grateful and thankful for all of your likes, love, shares, subscriptions, and support. It has just blossomed into the most beautiful thing, and we are so grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we have decided to bring it full circle today with the one and only state representative Latoya Greenwood. We brought her back, y'all. She said she would come back, and we brought her back. And thank you so much, Lita Greenwood, for being here today for the season finale. Thank you so much for inviting me back. I cannot believe it. Congratulations. Thank you. This thank has you. been just a tremendous, tremendous thing to be a part of your podcast and to watch you flourish and grow. So I'm very honored to be here. Well, thank you. Um, again, as I always say, you know, I knew exactly who I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that would be just the perfect thing for her to be our inaugural guest. And then for her to close out season one of Pros and Politics Podcast. And to come back and we can congratulate you <laughs> On your victory. Yes. Yes. Tell yes. us all about it. So thank you. Um, I was elected as the 13th Congressional District State Central Committee woman. Um, I'm very excited about being in that role because when I visited initially, I talked about how representation does matter. And so I'm very thankful to the constituents of the 13th Congressional District who saw fit to elect me in that role. Well, yes. the voters have spoken <laughs> and they did the absolute right thing. And you know, you had my full support. I mean, you know, my I, was, I couldn't do it fast enough. And so we appreciate you so much in everything that you are doing. Thank you. So, um, and again, the first African-American woman, yes. right? Yes, yes. Because that's what we do. Yes, In Alpha yes. Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Absolutely. No, no shade or nothing. Yes. But that's what we do. That is absolutely <laughs> what we do. So thank you. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> so you had one of the most watched episodes this season, didn't she, Chris? She had one of the most watched episodes. What what was your feedback that you got after being on the podcast? People came up to me and they said, I saw you on the podcast. <laughs> you and Kahala. <laughs> and I loved it. You know, I learned more about what mm -hmm. you do. I learned a little bit more about who you are. And I learned about you and Kahala's relationship as well. So people enjoyed it. You know, my parents, they loved it. So those are my, right, uh, well, you know, it. harshest critics sometimes. So when they yes. told me we loved it, I was very excited about that. So, yeah, I got a lot of positive feedback about it. That is awesome. Yeah. Please tell Mom and Daddy Greenwood thank you because yeah. their opinion obviously means a lot to me. Uh -huh. So for them to be like, oh, it was great. That means yes, a lot. Yes. That means a lot. They loved it. Well, good. Well, in season two, mm -hmm. you'll come back. Of course. <laughs> of course. Because we are full steam ahead now mm -hmm. into election season. Yes. So um, we've discussed mental health in the African-American community. We've mm -hmm. discussed financial literacy in the African-American community. Two mm -hmm. very important um tenants mm -hmm. that we really need to continue to work on mm -hmm. as a community mm -hmm. and so but now the primary is over and it's full steam ahead into the general and this is pearls and politics yes podcast so yes i will have you back and um if you will and of course senator belt will mm -hmm. come back and mm -hmm. so we just have a lot of awesome guests lined up 
for yeah. season two, and we are so excited about it. So I'm looking forward to it. Yes, yeah. yes. So tell me of the episodes. What was your favorite episode other than your own? Right, because you know I was gonna <laughs> say mine. But other than my own, of course, I'm going to hype up my senator, yes. Senator Bell. So I thought you guys had a great conversation. Mm -hmm. And again, it's about information, mm -hmm. um, learning more about what we do as elected officials, mm -hmm. because a lot of times people don't know exactly what does a state rep or a state senator do and the things that are most important to us. So I thought it was very Good conversation. Well, good. Yes. He told me that he got a lot of good feedback as well. Yeah. His episode was very popular mm -hmm. also. Um, and so, like I said, I just appreciate you all and all the information that you shared because I had one of my girlfriends from Indianapolis, Latanya. Mm -hmm. She said you made her want to get her whole life. Oh, she was I, like, she made me want to get my entire life. Like, what am I doing with my life? Now, this woman is in, what is it, Nesby, and she has mm -hmm. an MBA. She said, Representative Greenwood mm -hmm. make her, made her want to get her whole life. I love it. So you were out here inspiring, giving knowledge and information, and just doing everything that you were doing um, as the representative and the leader, oh. <laughs> as a leader <laughs> in the House. So I would say that, I probably don't have an absolute favorite episode mm -hmm. because they're all part of, you know, the I podcast. So. Right. But every single guest brought something so unique and special. Mm -hmm. And um, some episodes were, you know, more serious than others mm -hmm. or um, a little more informative. But I think I am thankful for each one of my guests that came mm -hmm. because they didn't have to take the time. Right. They mm -hmm. didn't have to take the time. But I have this whole village of wonderful people that can come and talk to our listening and viewing audience about anything. Yes. I, I think that, like you said, this podcast for a viewer is about information. It's about resources. It's about uplifting the communities um, that we come from. It's mm -hmm. about um, uplifting each other mm -hmm. in their roles. That it's okay to support each, each other. other. It's right. okay to cheer mm -hmm. for one another. So mm -hmm. I think it. I I have just loved it. I love the format. I love the way uh, you interview your style. So you you got it. <laughs> Thank you. So election season. Yes. What have you been busy? Mm -hmm. I, I I stand mm -hmm. Rep Greenwood. And so I, I know, but tell everyone you you've been busy. I mean, you got shred days and you chambering and do tell yes. us what you've been up to since episode one. Well, since episode one, gearing up for uh, the general election, which is in November and uh, making sure that the people in the 114th district know how important voting is, mm -hmm. how important it will be to make sure that our voice is heard. Um, the only way that we continue to win, the only way that we mm -hmm. continue to be a voice for the people is that the people show up and vote for mm -hmm. us. So we will be, uh, myself and Senator Bell, and Representative Jay Hoffman, we will be- The trifecta. Uh, yes, the aggressive. Trifecta. The trifecta. <laughs> we will be aggressive in get out the vote campaigns, registrations, and then follow through to make sure that we have our people at the polls ready to vote or early ballot voting, whichever way you, you want to do it, you'll be able to do it because we have many options in Illinois for you to make sure that your voice is heard through the ballot. So, And with that being said, mm -hmm. I know the importance, obviously, mm -hmm. having been elected and mm -hmm. having people that I love on the ballot, mm -hmm. that it's so important for us to vote. And the general election this year is Tuesday, November 8th. Yes. And as Representative Greenwood said, you can vote by mail. Yes. You can vote early. Mm -hmm. You can vote day of. You can even register to vote and vote the day of in the state of Illinois. Yes. So what you would have to do is always go. You can Google it. Mm -hmm. Put your state in. Register to vote. Mm -hmm. And then you will be directed to a website where you can then put in your state and then figure out 
how can I, where do I need to go? How mm-hmm. do I register to vote? Mm-hmm. And right now you can register to vote so you can have, make sure your voice is heard yes. on November 8th and vote for wonderful people that you want to see representing you in legislation. Mm-hmm. And also Pros and Politics Podcast, mm-hmm. along with Sandifer and Associates and Power of Change, we're having our, we're trying to do our part. Yes. To get the vote out mm-hmm. and to make sure that people are informed, registered first, then educated, and then mobilized to go out and vote. That's right. So on Saturday, September 17th at Jones Park in the great city of East St. Louis, Illinois, we will be having our first annual voter registration drive and community festival. And it will be from noon to four in Jones Park in East St. Louis. And so we want everybody to come out, have a snow cone, hop your kids up yes. on some cotton candy, bounce in the bounce house while you register to vote. Mm-hmm. And if you are 17 and you will be 18 by Tuesday, November 8th, you can register to vote now. Yeah. So please register, please vote, and please let your voice be heard. Exactly. We have um, made or created laws that have enabled us to have many different ways to access the ballot here Mm -hmm. in Illinois. And so we want to encourage people Mm -hmm. to exercise their right. And so I look forward to being out there on September 17th. Uh, meeting and greeting and having me a little cotton candy too. <laughs> That's right. We're going to have some pink cotton right. candy. Right. Right. We're going to make sure that cotton candy is pink. Exactly. <laughs> so we also touched on, in addition to starting out with the political, mm-hmm. and like I said earlier, we touched on the mental health. Mm-hmm. And you are running, ma'am. Mm-hmm. You are running mm-hmm. and you are running and mm-hmm. you are doing everything. But you're also a mom. Mm -hmm. You also take excellent care of your parents. Mm -hmm. With that mental health piece, tying that in, Mm -hmm. how do you find your balance? Especially in an election season, because let me tell you. Yes. Yes. So for me, um, I was just talking to you about a little bit of my balance. I will take random trips to visit my son. And uh, the drive there is... A relaxing space for me so I can kind of unwind clear my mind and it really gets me more creative in my ideas it's like it gives you a charge and so when I'm ready to come back I have more ideas I have a, a peace a, a, you know I'm settled in mm-hmm. the things that I want to do for the remainder of that week or a couple of weeks moving forward so But of course, I have a great support system with my family, uh, with my friends and, you know, just trying to establish some other relationships too to kind of keep me balanced. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So moving forward to November, Mm -hmm. you said you're focusing, of course, on voter registration and mobilization and making sure we all make it to the polls. But on a legislative And from a legislative lens, what are you focusing on heading into the end of the year? Mm -hmm. Well, right now we are heavily, I'm on a work group um, in the house on reproductive health care. So we meet weekly on that topic, um, listening to various providers, um, listening to just people who want to provide us with information, data on reproductive health care and how important it is to women all over Illinois, in particular women of color. Um, again, in creating access, equity, and opportunity um, to health care. So that's one of my priority issues anyway. Mm-hmm. So to receive the information that we have been getting about maternal mortality, Um, It's still a crisis in our state, so we still have more work to do in that area. And then just about the overall rights and choice of women to be able to handle their own reproductive health care. So those are some of the issues that 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 will probably close me out to the end of this this year. Will you all be back this year? We will be back in veto session. Now, what is veto session? Veto session is for those pieces of legislation um, that may have 
uh, a deadline date that needs to be extended. Okay. Um, it could be for legislation, like when Roe v. Wade happened, if we wanted to, if we had not already been a state that created several laws just in case Roe v. Wade, the decision that came down, happened, then we would go back into veto and come, you know, with some legislation to address that. So veto is like a cleanup. Okay. Legislative tying up session. loose ends. Yes, tying okay. up loose ends. And uh, we may or may not see um, legislation. The speaker created four work groups. One, the reproductive health work group, mental health work group, gun violence work group, and a work group that's focused on social media bullying. So those were created out of uh, Highland Park, the shooting that took place there, out of different um, uh, social media incidents that's been occurring around our state, and of course the Roe v. Wade and uh, maternal mortality, and then mental health piece with the gun kind of tied it all together. So we may or may not see legislation in one or all of those areas during veto as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is veto typically shorter? Yes. It's normally two weeks. So we will, it's scheduled for, I believe, the week after election. Okay. And then it'll be a week um, sometime in December okay. before Christmas. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you all go back to Springfield for yes. that? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because yeah. when you're not in Springfield, state senators and state reps, they work out of their district office. Yes. And so where is a person's district office usually located? Well, um, it's located primarily in the base of their district. So mm -hmm. for me, mine has always been even prior to me having a seat. We go back to Representative Jackson mm -hmm. and before him, Representative Wyveta Young. They've already always been housed in East St. Louis. Okay. And um, I was in that building where they all had their office prior to me, but I had to move out because of some other reasons. So now I'm in the Kenneth Hall Regional Building, which is located downtown East St. Louis, right across from City Hall. Okay. And that is her district office. So yes. if you need to contact Leader Greenwood when she's in or out of session, yes. actually, you can yes. always contact that office. That's where she's located. That is where I am. And I'm so happy you brought that up because a lot of people um, don't know that I have moved, even though I've posted it on social media and put it in our local paper. So, yes, we are in a new location, probably oh, like a year now. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. We want people to know. So mm -hmm. if they need to come see you or they need to reach out, mm -hmm. then they know where their representative. Um, I was speaking at church this past Sunday mm -hmm. and I was talking about the event because we're partnering, of course, with Power of Change. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to the congregation and I'm saying, you know, there's so much to whenever someone has so much to gain, people have to remember you also have so much to lose. Yes. And there's so much to gain in November. Mm -hmm. And then obviously there's so much to lose. And everybody knows, you know, Auntie Maxine and, mm -hmm. you know, all AOC and all these other people. But I literally looked at some people in the congregation and said, but she's not your right. rep. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? She, mm -hmm. so we need to know who our reps are, who our senators are, mm -hmm. who our circuit clerk is who you know yes and yeah. then you need to know who's on the ballot yes then find out whatever information that you want to find out about that person go to their website mm -hmm. stop by their district office go to their what coffee and, and yeah coffee and conversation exactly mm -hmm. so that way you can make an informed decision at the ballot not just you know a, a click and go mm -hmm. but you can actually be civically engaged in the process yes and so that's why we want people to know where your district that I mean, some people probably didn't even know that people have a district office. They might yes. think your only office is in the Capitol building. No. Well, you care. Every person cares about their district. And so they have to have an office in their district to be able to connect with their constituents. Mm -hmm. So we just want people to know. We just want people to be informed. 
And now we know that you move. Yes, I love that. And and you said something very important about knowing who your elected officials are. Mm -hmm. um, in the communities where you live, it's very important. Your school board, your city council, who your mayor is. Uh, your township, your county board. There are so many um, p positions, elected officials that are making important decisions about mm -hmm. our lives and how we're going to move forward as a Metro East region. So that's very important. And please don't forget about the Supreme Court. Our Illinois Supreme Court is very important. So when we go into the, to cast our votes, we need to vote from the top of the ballot to the bottom, bottom of the ballot. ballot. Yes, so very important. Yes, and I'm so glad you brought that up because as we stated in the first episode, you were like, I call, I'm so glad you said every election matters. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you mentioned that from the top to the bottom, because as we all know, especially in a presidential campaign, mm -hmm. people vote for the president and then it, it's like 100% people vote. And then as you get down and you get down and it, it starts tapering off mm -hmm. to the point, sometimes people don't even get to the back of the ballot. Exactly. So those people don't get your vote. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so those offices or those issues mm -hmm. or those particular vacancies don't get your vote. Mm -hmm. It's so important to go from the very top of the ballot all the way to the bottom of the ballot and make your voice heard on each candidate and each issue. Yes, absolutely. Yes. yes. So there was some amazing news. Amazing. They came out yes. on Tuesday. Yes. Tuesday, we announced that the Illinois State Police Headquarters will be moving to East St. Louis. East St. Louis. Yes. And Director Kelly was there. And um, it was just a long time in the making. Oh, we right. have had so many conversations and meetings leading up to this. So um, very exciting news to be able to bring to the community of East St. Louis and the surrounding communities to know that our Illinois State Police will be headquartered in East St. Louis. So very exciting. That is very exciting because what for so many years, for decades, what it was Collinsville. Yes, it has been in Collinsville. And so we're going to have a new building built from the ground up wow. right in East St. Louis. So we are excited. We, we, we view this as the beginning of the turnaround of East St. Louis. And so mm. this will generate I love the businesses. This will generate revenue and which will increase services that the community will jobs. receive jobs. So, just very exciting, and I could not be happier about the, the announcement that we had on Tuesday. Well, I'm excited because, again, what did you say, the turnaround? The turnaround. The turnaround, and that's what we're doing here at Pros and Politics Podcast. We are fighting every narrative, mm -hmm. okay? So whether it's, you know, the unfair, untrue narratives about East St. Louis, about communities of color, about people of color, and I love the fact that, our legislators mm -hmm. and the Illinois State Police thought it's a good thing to invest yes. in the community that raised us mm -hmm. and has had some challenges in terms of crime or different things like that. And I feel that that will really assist in making people feel safer. Absolutely. And assist in fighting crime because if the state police is housed where I'm thinking about doing something crazy, I just might not do it. Mm -hmm. And so it's a holistic rejuvenation and revitalization of the community and the city. And I'm, that's, I'm just. Yes. Yeah. Very exciting. And um, our director, Brendan Kelly, he has been um, just an advocate for our community mm -hmm. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And they have partnered uh, with, of course, the East St. Louis police, but through the school district, through the wraparound wellness program, they have been a true partner with uh, Dr. Golson and the work that she's doing to help with trauma and um, kids, students and families that's dealing with trauma in the community, so. And he has been an advocate for a long time because mm -hmm. a lot of people may not know that Brendan Kelly was the circuit clerk for a period of time mm -hmm. before he became the state's attorney. Mm -hmm. So we kind of did a switch. Mm -hmm. So he was the elected circuit clerk 
and I was an assistant state's attorney and then he became the state's attorney and then I became the circuit clerk. Mm -hmm. And so we actually were on the ballot together for mm -hmm. several elections and he has been advocating for a long time. And when I transitioned from the circuit clerk's office mm -hmm. to my chief legal, obviously the agency that I work for and ISP work closely together. Yeah. So for the last nine months, anything that I needed, you know, I'm able to call and his staff is like, you know, we know that you, you know, know our director and you're with our, with this agency that's with the state. We all work together. It's been a really, really good relationship. So that is amazing. That, yes. That has come to pass. Yes. In the 89 block. Yes. Yes. He's East been St. a great Lewis. partner. Yes, he has. That is awesome. Yeah. And so coming up tomorrow, mm -hmm. we have, we will have with us Nikki Budzinski, who's running for Congress in the 13th Congressional District. And our very special guest, very, very special very guest. Very special guest. Um, Congressman James Clyburn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we are over the moon, excited to be able to welcome him. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time. He's been in East St. Louis before, but it okay. was some years ago. And I think he came and stumped for Inyard at that time. We okay. were at the Senior Citizens Building. But he's coming back for Nikki, and we're very excited to have him here. And again. that man of Omega Sci-Fi. That's him. Is stomping. Yes. <laughs> Yes. I just love it. It just yes. all works together. Yes. That man of that wonderful man who is the whip, right? Yes, we will have the House Majority Whip with us mm -hmm. in Cahokia tomorrow. And so we're very excited to welcome him here. Yes. yes. And he's stomping. Stomping. For Nikki. Yes. And he is a man of Omega Sci-Fi. Yes, he is. So we love how that just works together. Exactly. So, because you know, the brother be out. <laughs> and so he is coming to stomp for Nikki. Yes, he is. So okay. we, we can't wait to welcome him and her to Cahokia Heights. Yes, yes. Nikki has been working very hard. Mm -hmm. And uh, she won, she, we we're talking about primary win. She won her primary mm -hmm. in June. And so now here we go again. Into November. Exactly. Making sure we're doing what we need to do. Mm -hmm. And our the, the bruh is coming. Yes. She will be a true voice for us um, when she when she goes to Washington, D.C., because we're going to push her to success. And we're able to do that uh, with uh, St. Clair County behind us, the Metro East region behind us mm -hmm. to be able to support Nikki all the way to Washington, D.C. And she's going to be a great advocate for us when she gets there. Yes. And so all in all seriousness, we're going to bring it back and put respect on his name. because mm -hmm. That's what we do here. Mm -hmm. The majority whip. Clyburn will be with us yes. on tomorrow and it's going to be great. Yes. And it's going to be great. And come out. Please come out. And It's a meet and greet. So please come out. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's just there's just so much going on. It is. And you were just doing such an amazing job and you're going to keep going and you're going to keep doing what you're doing and you were just amazing you Thank know you. that i think you are amazing <laughs> and you know three to hold, we going i'm going to have your back and be there for you no matter what mm -hmm. and mama data greenwood and nick yes nick hey nick and <laughs> and we're just going to keep going so mm -hmm. thank you so much it's been a joy it's been a pleasure you brought us in you taking us out oh. and we are just so excited for everything that you're doing and everything that we're going to be doing in season two yes. of pros and politics podcast so just tune in we've got a new set we've got new decor we've got new guests we are just really trying to continue to elevate the platform. And we thank you for all the loves, likes, shares, and support. It's been amazing. Our political pearls, we thank you. You are amazing. And we hope that you enjoyed today's episode. We hope that you got information and that you were getting energized and mobilized as we head full steam ahead yes. into Tuesday, November 8th mm -hmm. of 2022, whether we vote by mail, whether we early vote, or whether you're old school and you like to get up. No, I'm voting the day of. You get up and you vote so your voice is heard. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and that you will join us again next week for season two of Pearls and Politics Podcast. 
Thank you. Thank you.